but I'm also entitled to judge you as somebody right. who did not find it in themselves to express anything involving any I've outrage just expressed or it. any... I've just expressed uh, it. And, and, and Piers, well, this is not journalism. The idea... No, Piers, he, he actually did, but he, he hit you with the whammy, basically. Guys, who put Loki on here with Piers Morgan? All right, obviously give yourself a raise. Let's start right there. Give yourself a raise. Listen, so Loki as an artist, um, he's great at basically every aspect of hip hop and rap and all these other things, guys, right? But the one thing you probably don't want to do is be on the other side of whatever Loki is talking about. And the reason why that is, is because he's going to demolish you lyrically. I, I imagine that there's going to be a song regarding whatever this interview is about, guys, but let's check it out. Rapper and pro-Palestine activist Kareem Dennis, better known as Low Key, has been a powerful and influential pro-Palestinian voice before and during this conflict. The official version of his track was taken off YouTube mm. after the Hamas attacks on October the 7th, 14 years after its initial release. He's been Guys, I remember this song, Obama Nation. Oh my God, What's listen. Highly critical of what he says is media bias and accused me of taking a pro-Israel slant on this show. Well, I'm joined now by Low Key, who's at our London studio. Lucky, thank you very, very much indeed for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Pierce. Um, I, I mean, on the issue of whether I'm pro-Israel, I, I don't have a horse in this race or this war. I, I say the same exact thing. But I let's try go. and be balanced. I try and have all kinds of views. I think we've had more pro-Palestinian people on this show in the last two weeks than any other new show in the world. They've been getting huge audiences. So I would take issue with that charge that somehow he's, I am slanted one way or another. Right I think this, this whole thing is a complete tragedy. I know that you've been committed to the plight of the Palestinians for a long time, going back at least 15 years from what I can see in terms of you traveling to Gaza. Um, what was your reaction when you first heard about these attacks on October the 7th? Well, let's be clear. Reading the testimony of survivors of October 7th from Kibbutz Bi'eri, like Yasmin Porat, was extremely harrowing. What she alleges is not only that her husband was killed in the initial takeover, but also she then says that the Israeli military tanks fired on the room where the hostages were, 12 Israeli civilian captives. We have also seen fantastic work in the Haaretz newspaper by Amos Harrell, where he speaks at length about uh, Brigadier General Rosenfeld, who was in charge of the Haaretz crossing. Now, when this military base was taken over, what he says, Amos Harrell in Haaretz, the well-known Israeli newspaper, he says that Rosenfeld, when he realized that the base was overtaken, called in an airstrike. This is in Haaretz. These are not my words. These are the words of Amos Harrell. What we then saw is since October the 7th, 22 Israeli civilian detainees killed in Gaza by Israeli airstrikes. The Israeli military has something called the Hannibal Directive. The Hannibal Directive was developed in Lebanon in the 80s by the Israelis with the clear understanding that they do not want the other side to take hostages. So, for example, you have the case of um, Hada Golding, Golding in 2014, what Israel called Operation Protective Edge, which killed over 2,200 Palestinians. But when uh, this Israeli soldier was taken captive by the Palestinians, Israel then proceeded to kill everyone, including the civilians in the area around where he was kept, and the soldier himself. So what Israel has, unfortunately, is a policy of killing captives. If you look at the case of Gilad Shalit, this was yeah, an Israeli hang, uh, soldier. Just, all right, listen, allow I, me I, to finish. I, I, allow me to finish. Well, yeah, and don't no, you can't just me. keep talking. You can't but, keep talking. No, no, no I have one last point to make, and I hope that right. you'll allow me to make it. In the all case right. of Gilad Shalit, what happened was one Israeli soldier led to a thousand Palestinian prisoners being released. There is a clear understanding within the Israeli military and political elite that they do not want people to be kidnapped. So therefore, they unfortunately, as history has shown us and as the directive within the Israeli military shows, they take action to kill their own captives that have been taken by the other side. Right. Let me guys. 
Okay, so we reacted to Basim Youssef uh, basically versus Piers Morgan. And a couple of people in the comments were like, bro, you cannot say uh, that 500,000 uh, you know, Palestinians equal one Israeli. Bro, he just said the same thing, right? I'm not saying that this, is a, this should be a normal thing. This is an okay thing, right? But um, unfortunately, I think that's how the world sees it, right? So... But we're going to actually uh, research the, uh, the case that he's referring to, though. Let me respond to you. You tweeted on October the 7th, the arrogance to believe you could keep two million trapped in an open-air prison indefinitely, dot, dot, dot. That appears to have been your only comment about what happened. So just for the record, do you condemn what Hamas did that day? I condemn the genocide conditions which have created this violence Every heartbeat, every human heartbeat is sacred to me. And that is what has compelled me to work as I have for the last 15 years no, to, save lives, to save that lives, to save lives, to stop people. It wasn't your question, but it's kind of the same thing. It's, in, it's at least in the same sphere. Uh, he's making his point here, but obviously no one is going to sit here and say, you know what? You're right. Hamas is great. No, they're not going to say that, bro. Come on. No one's going to say that because it's, it's terrible. You're dying. Peers. But that wasn't we my do, question. No, no, we do not have a clear picture of what happened on October 7th because unfortunately, too much of the media has relied on the Israeli military talking points which are given directly to them. Until so you don't neutral believe. observers, oh, so, so just until sure, neutral okay, observers are able respond. to establish the facts of October 7th, I will not, I will not allow the talking points of the Israeli military to become dominant mm. of what happened on that day. You know, you are Palestinians the, I, I are subject say, to a genocidal okay, war. Collective punishment in Gaza is real. Let me, let me respond. You are Collective the only pro-Palestinian person I've had on the show in two weeks who has tried to make out that this just didn't happen. On October the seventh, or the, somehow you are was perpetrated by you are Israelis. Misrepresenting what I am well, saying. Do you, do All right, listen. This is what he said here. Right, just outside observer. Uh, what he's saying is that he's not going to pay attention to it because the other side is saying it, right? But you do have to kind of understand that this happened, right? So regardless of you know whatever stance you're taking, you have to kind of be like, listen, bro, this did happen. At least acknowledge that it did exist. It did happen, right? There, there are videos of of it for real bro it happened take that into consideration obviously at least right? you, gonna... well, i've got two questions they're very but does it equal to the two million being held in, open, in an open air prison no it doesn't straightforward do you believe that 1500 people were supported, including 260 people at a music festival you're a musician and secondly do you condemn the people who did it they're not so difficult Piers, i would like to quote something that you just said Wait. to the former spokesperson for the IDF. This was your exact sentence not long okay. ago. Okay. You said it's difficult to tell between combatants and non-combatants. So yeah. you the implication of what you said was somehow it was understandable that Israel has killed a Palestinian child every 15 that. minutes in Gaza. I didn't say that. For the last no, but somehow they I couldn't literally... tell that those children were not combatants, according to no, you. No, I didn't it's say that. It's understandable. I didn't say that, and I have said it is absolutely appalling the number of children who are dying in Gaza. It's appalling and it will get worse. I make no bones about that and, at all. And, and I have to I say, say and I have to say you have to start you have to start are... surely from a humanity point of view, I can absolutely express my horror at the deaths of Palestinian innocent civilians, as I have done many times over the years. I think it's horrifying. Uh, and I think this is why I, I have a serious problem with the proposed ground invasion, because I think it will create uh, unbelievably large numbers of civilian casualties, and I'm not sure that the strategy will work. And keep in mind, guys, Chris Morgan was also the guy who was uh, against the Iraq itch issue, okay? He was. So I, I don't think that he is going to be someone who is ignoring the overall plight of the people, right? Even though he is on a very large, you know, media organization, right? He's attached to it. Um, I think that he's probably one of the voices of reason in these instances. He has the ability to hear both sides of the coin here, right? I think a lot of his you know, arguments, let's say, um, should be looked at very deeply, at least, guys. The reason why I'm saying this is because I'm not sure he can say what he really wants to say like that, guys. But he does bring on the people that are kind of saying what I think he really wants to say, but he can't say, okay? So that's an interesting thing. So that's why when I look at him, I'm, I generally um, look deeply at the, the guests, 
uh, generally that he brings. Because I'm not sure he can actually say exactly what he would like to say and still have the platform to do exactly what's happening right now. Bro, who is bringing low-key to debate? No one. Don't do that. All right? Just <laughs> let you know right now. Don't bring, don't bring him or, or Basim Yusuf. If you want to have an actual debate, don't do that. They're going to demolish you. But who is doing that? Pay attention. Let's get it. Um, but I'm just curious why you, who is, I know you, you care about people. I know you care passionately about the Palestinian civilians. But you're the only pro-Palestine voice I've had who's even tried to suggest that what Hamas did on October the 7th was not as bad as we think. So is that what you but think? What I mean, do, do you we not think? But what do we think, Piers? The information is not clear. As I've said it's to pretty, you, it is clear. It's pretty clear. Life, it is clear. Is sa- Hamas is haven't even tried to hide it's it. It's sacred. But I'm look, not trying either. to hide anything. You're trying to hide well, something. No, it's trying to. No, no. You know, with respect. Mm-hmm. With respect. Oh, low key, bro. Come on. What's going on? All right. Listen. Um, this is now the second time he's asking this question, and he's kind of like, uh, kind of refusing to actually say, "Hey, bro, this is crazy." Bassem Yusuf did it. Just understand, bro. Just, just say it. It's fine. Right. I mean, you'll probably get a little bit more people on your side, but but the fact that you're not answering it. You are trying to you are definitely like you, trying Loki. to dissemble. I and do. I'll explain why. I've given you an opportunity to simply say whether you condemn what Hamas did, which, by the way, they have brazenly boasted about. Yeah, they posted yeah. videos celebrating what they did. There is no doubt about what Hamas did. Right. They want you to know what they did. They want me to know that. They want the world to know. They killed Jewish people in the main and in Israel with impunity. 260 people at a music festival, babies, grandmothers, they kidnapped 200 people. God knows what's happened to them. Now, you can shake your head, but what you can't do is deny that that happened because Hamas have admitted it brazenly and with and great, I, and I have great publicly pride. Stated and sec- and so I've secondly, if, they, if they've admitted it, do you condemn what they did? I absolutely mourn the loss of all human life in this conflict, and I have struggled for 15 years of my life in a way that, Piers, to be honest, you haven't, okay? And I take you as an empathetic person with a high level of emotional intelligence, okay? Mm. I have struggled for 15 years of my life to stop the for a ceasefire now, to stop deaths. But I have to say, Piers, that actually this line of questioning unfortunately, on a personal level, is somewhat hypocritical, and I'll explain why. Mm. On April 18th, 2022, you said the exact phrase, that you feel like Nelson Mandela walking out of prison on the long road to freedom of speech. Today, there is a statue for Nelson Mandela outside Parliament. Now, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, Beit Salim and even the Harvard Law School have said that Israel practices apartheid against the Palestinian people. Do you know what the ANC struggle against apartheid entailed? Are you aware that yes. the ANC are believed oh, to have bro, very smart. unfortunately, oh, horrifically no. and terribly taken the live, lives of right. children and civilians in their struggle against apartheid. So, Piers, you seem absolutely con- to not only compare yourself okay okay listen listen okay i see what you're doing listen uh, i I like him because he's extremely intelligent he's not again this is why you don't debate with certain people right um he just basically pulled a 180 on him in a way that's crazy right Um, now keep this in mind Piers morgan did reference uh apartheid referring to israel during the basim yusuf interview guys right so just just understand that this is troubling but that's still not the point right because i think the majority of people would still be like bro it's crazy i understand this is what you did to get to this point but this but that whole thing was crazy all right um could it have happened without it probably not right but that's still not oh my god guys this is this is rough this is this bro you got he's good he's he's guys yeah he should be a lawyer all right because you put yourself into like a moral conundrum now you're like I still disavow all of that craziness that's happening, but but yes, does it? 
would anything ever change from the Palestinian situation? Probably not. Probably not, right? But, oh, man, bro. But then keep this in mind, the Palestinians have been going through the same thing for a really long time, right? With no media coverage, zero, right? Um, we saw that graph that uh, Bassem Yusuf put up there, guys. We saw that graph. Oh, no. Um, let's go. Let's just to do Nelson this. Nelson Mandela, who served 27 years in jail for what they described as terrorism at the time, but yet you cannot see what the vast majority of human rights organizations in the world see when they look at the Palestinians. When you look at UN Resolution 194, Okay. Paragraph 11. Oh, no. The Palestinians have the right to return home. Almost a, a million of them were displaced in 1948 with the foundation of the state of Israel. And what we are now on the brink of is Palestinians, millions of, millions of them, being driven into the Sinai Desert with help of the U.S. Delta Force. Yeah, but Loki, with Loki, help let of me the jump British. In. Let me jump in. A manufactured, making, an Israeli manufactured okay. humanitarian catastrophe in you Gaza. Making, there is a 23% infant mortality okay, rate in Gaza. Oh my God. Let me say something. I completely agree with you about the plight of the Palestinian people. I've tweeted about this for the last two weeks. No, no, to be fair, you haven't, Piers, and this is not journalism. Shireen Abu well, Akhla was my tweets. journalism. Yasser Murtaja was journalism. What? Mu'taz uh, Azaiza, that's journalism. Palestinians right. are reaching out from the cage that Israel has put them in, and they are trying to speak to the world. Yeah, and they are I'm being met, saying, they are being met with cold indifference. And I would say to you, Piers, I would say to yeah. you that that gentleman that you've just had on the show, Mark, mm -hmm. Regev, Mark Regev, he belongs in The Hague. David mm -hmm. Petraeus, you know, Piers, you made your reputation as opposing the invasion of Iraq. Well, yeah, I would right. ask you, journalist to journalist, how could you justify the interview you just gave to the head of U.S. forces in that illegal occupation of Iraq that David Petraeus led? He was then the head of the CIA. Both of the individuals that you have just had on this show deserve to be in The Hague, tried for war crimes. I am not anything like them. I have not hurt a fly. Those two men have. Why are they given the respectability that you gave them with your interview? And why am I interrogated as if I am somehow someone that could hurt a human being? Bro, let me answer that without even him answering yet. You actually are speaking more than I have ever seen anyone speak on this man's show. Like, Piers Morgan is specifically known for interrupting people. Bro, that's the meme. He, inter he just interrupts people. He's letting you talk. Okay. Again, what I told you earlier, guys, pay attention to the guests that he brings onto the show and pay attention to how much he allows them to basically speak. There's certain things he can't say, guys. But I, well, certainly in Mark Regev's case, I pushed him hard on all the positions Israel that wasn't is currently hard. adopting. That wasn't well, okay. hard. Oh. Uh, let me explain. Because I, 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 I did a tweet it. today and I, <laughs> I meant every word of this. All I right. said, I have great respect for anybody who in the immediate aftermath of this appalling terror attack said it was outrageous and appalling. There are right? 1,500 Palestinians no, still under the hang rubble on. in Gaza. Exactly. I, you've had your say. They're still but under the rubble, Piers. They're here's still under problem. the rubble. I You're said, not bringing them I up said those. That. I said those who, whose instinctive reaction was not to feel that, oh and I think God. you're one of them, because your reaction was to say the arrogance to think you could keep 2 million people trapped in an open-air prison indefinitely, as if somehow that justified what happened that day. Piers, it didn't Piers, justify Piers, what you happened You know exactly what you're doing. Well, you should be wait, 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 Loki, hold on. Hold on, Loki. When that tweet was sent, you had not seen anything had happened. You have had your... You've had your criticism of me, and that's fine. You're perfectly entitled to it. Like I said to you, I, or you said about me, I believe in free speech. You're entitled to your opinion of me, of David Petraeus, of Mark Regev. But I'm also entitled to judge you as somebody right. who did not find it in themselves to express anything involving any I've outrage just expressed or it. any... I've just expressed uh, it. And, and, and Piers, well, this is not journalism. The idea... No, Piers, he, he actually did, but he, he hit you with the whammy, basically. He he flipped it on you in a way that was crazy by still... No, bro, I think he's... Actually, he didn't. Wait a second, he didn't. Even the flip kind of felt a little weird because, bro, are you saying that this... Oh, no, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't at all. Let's get it. ...of us comparing our moral compasses 
and somehow mm. I have a deficient moral compass. Somehow I am a I didn't moral monster. You don't. You, you, don't. Know, you, you don't. know what's true? You, you know what's true? Is I, I am that. not. The people that have shown a cold indifference to the ethnically cleansed Palestinians, dispossessed, mm. one in three every refugee in the world is Palestinian. They are the largest refugee right. population. Those who have turned a blind eye to their suffering are those that need right. to be seriously interrogated about their moral compass. And I would ask you, I would ask no, you before we end the show, no, I would ask okay. you that I am able to read out the names of the 20 Palestinian journalists no, you that can't. have been no, killed. No, in no, no, please, no. Because I have two more guests. So you're We're censoring me. We're supposed to have eight minutes. So you're no, censoring me. There's 20 I journalists. Have, so I'm being no, censored now. And I'll tell you I something to, else. You're not being this censored. Badge, this You've badge, more, this badge, oh, all right. zoom in on this badge. This badge okay. was given all to right. me by an employee of this building who said they were told mm. they could not wear this badge because it was the Palestinian flag. You talk about mm. uncensored, this is censored. Nobody, this badge well, I was haven't banned told anybody from they an employee can, in this building I have told because nobody they stand they with the Palestinian can't wear people. A badge. So that's a ridiculous thing to say. I'm in New York, uh, but good to see you, Loki. I appreciate you coming on the program. Oh, 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 oh my God. Okay, yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about, guys. I love Loki. Like, I love his spirit, right? I mean, I love the fact that he's so, like, um, let me explain it, guys. I love the fact that he is so strong in whatever he believes. I, I generally like people like that, right? They cannot be swayed for the most part. But, the fact that you didn't say the the words that need to be said, that's troubling a little bit, guys. But I mean, you have you can say it, but then be like, listen, this is also what the problem is. But I, he just gave us what the problem was and never said the words, and flipped it on us and gave us another analogy on how that how this could be technically a good thing, but the, there's really not a really a. I'm trying to see the good thing about taking people's lives, guys. That's not really a good thing. I can't find the the great in that, guys. Right? Um, I don't think this changed any any overall idea that I had of him um, as a person. I mean, I, don't, I generally don't uh, hero worship, right? If that makes any sense, guys. So, um, it never this this doesn't change anything for me. Um, I feel the same exact way. Um, I think that he is extremely intelligent um, as a human being. Um, he has the ability to debate uh, in a way that is world class. You probably don't really want to mess with this man intellectually because I think he has the capability to just demolish. But again, oh, I need to go back to the one very specific thing. I do not like the fact that he um, didn't just say the magic words, right? Uh, Told the line for a moment, sir. Just, just, for, just say the words that we need to hear because if not, you sound very. You know, like you're trying to make excuses for for why more people need to have their lives taken away, guys. Um, but all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly.